Hello everyone, this is Rick and today we are going to discuss about the megalithic culture in the southern part of Indian subcontinent and along with that we are also going to discuss the different archaeological challenges faced while interpreting the Vedic age. Now in Vedic age there are both literary and archaeological sources but they don't always satisfy each other. So we will understand the problems faced by historians and archaeologists while corroborating these two sources and along with that we will study about the megalithic culture in the southern part of India. So without doing any delay let's get into details. The megalithic sites in South India. Megaliths in South India date from around 1200 BC with important sites in Karnataka such as Brahmagiri, Maski and others. So these are few of the important megalithic sites in Karnataka and along with that we also get megalithic sites in Kerala and Tamil Nadu also. So Brahmagiri and Maski are two of the most important megalithic sites in India. Tamil Nadu hosts a variety of megalithic types including urn burials and cane circles found at sites like Adi Channalur and Kodu Manal and others. So Adi Channalur and Kodu Malal are important sites in Tamil Nadu and they are specifically important for the burial evidences. Urn burials are there where people are buried by placing them in large urn shaped pots and cane circles means stone circles are made in which the body is buried. The overlap in megalithic and neolithic objects suggest a transition phase with iron age providing clear evidence of settled life. Now in South India it is very difficult to distinguish the Neolithic, Megalithic and Chalcolithic age because they all overlap each other and in many of the sites they were contemporary to each other also. So there is an overlap of Megalithic and Neolithic objects and there this is also a transition phase the megalithic phase is also a transition phase with the iron age providing clear evidence of settled life so megalithic phase is actually the iron age and there we get evidences of settled life Megalithic sites such as Kudakallu in Kerala have been dated between the 2nd century BC to 2nd century CE. So this, uh, this site in Kerala is one of the recent megalithic sites and it has been dated from 2nd century BC to 2nd century CE. Early South Indian communities engaged in agriculture, hunting, fishing and animal husbandry. So there was multi modes of subsistence with agriculture, hunting, fishing and also animal rearing. Subsistence and settlement. How did the people used to survive in these sites? Evidence from charred grains at sites like Piyampalli shows the cultivation of cereals, meats and millets and pulses. So cereals, millets and pulses were cultivated and that can be evidenced from the charred grain evidence found in the site of Payampalli. Findings suggest sedentary lifestyle supported by well-developed craft traditions. So the people here were no more nomadic, they were very much settled and their lifestyle was supported by well-developed craft industry. People viewed the craft industry as a mode of subsistence also. Hunting scenes depicted in the paintings at Marayur and Attala in Kerala. So in the sites of Marayur and Attala in Kerala, we get paintings which show hunting scenes. Therefore, we can understand that hunting was still prevalent in the megalithic sites of southern part of India. Domestication of animals such as cow, sheep, dog and horse indicates a sophisticated level of animal animal husbandry. So what were the animals which were domesticated? They were cow, sheep and dog and along with that we also get evidences of horse. 
the uh, getting of horse is very much important because uh, until chalcolithic period horse was not very much popular as a domesticated animal the consistent use of fish hooks at some sites reveals a continuity in subsistence practices from the neolithic chalcolithic phase so there was cultivation of uh, hunting of fish also and fishermen used to be a community who used to hunt fish with the help of fish hooks therefore some sites reveals a continuity of subsistence practices from the neolithic chalcolithic phase right up to the iron age craft and specialized trade now what kind of craft industry used to go on during the megalithic times the megalithic sites in south india showcase advanced craftsmanship in pottery bead making and metallurgy so there was pottery as we can understand from the ceramic evidences which were found bead making was also prevalent which means that there was a specific bead industry and metallurgy can be understood very well from the findings of iron in these sites different kinds of pottery found include black and red ware some with leads featuring animals uh, shapes so some of the pottery objects had a lead covering and that covering had animal shapes in it and the most common type of ceramic found is black and red ware evidence of bead making with grave goods such as aged carnelian beads so there was evidence of bead making and those beads have been found as grave goods in few of the burials and one of the most high status bead was at aged carnelian bead many artifacts suggest knowledge of alloying and metallurgical techniques so there are many iron artifacts and from them we can understand that the people had knowledge of alloying and they had knowledge of different other metal technologies also objects at some sites made by forging thin strips of metal and then joining them together indicative of advanced iron working skills so people had knowledge how to rejoin two other iron artifacts therefore we can understand that the megalithic people of south india had advanced iron working skills now metal work and metallurgy what kind of metal work used to be performed and what are the metallurgical evidences we get today the metal artifacts from sites like pajhayannur and machhad indicate the local smelting of iron and advanced metal work so few of the sites indicate that there was local smelting of iron done and the metal work was very much advanced the production of goods was linked to exchange networks suggested by the proximity to trade routes so production of goods was very much because of the trade network which used to exist in those times and exchange network also depended on the production of goods as is suggested by the proximity to trade routes the extensive variety of iron artifacts was found demonstrating metals importance in daily life so megalithic period can be characterized as iron age because of the abundance in the availability of iron and thus we get to know that metal was an important part of daily life in the megalithic period a well preserved late neolithic early iron age sarcophagus burial at kodu mannal revealed a secondary burial practice so burial was very much secondary it was not primary burial and the, we get an evidence of uh, secondary burial in kodu mannal where we see a sarcophagus burial means th the person was buried inside a box the presence of copper and bronze object alongside iron suggest a diverse metallurgical knowledge so people did not only depend on iron they also had the use of copper and bronze and thus we get to understand that there was diverse metallurgical knowledge in the megalithic times rituals and cultural practices what are the rituals and cultural practices 
done by the megalithic people the megalithic monuments were not just burial sites but also places for performing important community rituals so we in the left hand side picture you can see a megalithic burial site but the megalithic monuments were not just burial sites they were also places for performing different community rituals Rock paintings at megalithic sites depict various scenes indicating the cultural significance of the sites. So we get rock paintings in various megalithic uh, paintings and from there we can understand that all the sites, especially the burial sites, had some kind of cultural significance. Findings at multiple sites gave us valuable insights into the lives and experiences of megalithic communities. So from the different kinds of artifacts found in the megalithic sites, we can get valuable insight regarding the cultural life of the megalithic period. The construction of monuments involved community endeavors suggesting a complex social structure. In the left hand side burial, you can see that there was a specific design made for the burial and that kind of design can only be made with the help of the whole community. Thus, we can see evidences of community endeavors suggesting a complex social structure. Practices like feasting, gift exchange and alliance forging were integral to this culture. So we also find practices of feast, community feast which was a part of community ritual and with that happened gift exchange and alliance forging also. Important megalithic sites and their characteristics. We will go through few of the important characteristics of the South Indian megalithic sites. The sites in Karnataka like Brahmagiri, Maski and Hallur show a range of megalithic practices including urn burials. So the sites in Karnataka mainly the Brahmagiri, Maski and Hallur show us a range of megalithic practices. There were many kind of megalithic features in these sites including urn burials which means burial in large pots. Tamil Nadu sites exhibit a diverse set of megalithic artifacts from stone alignment to iron implements. So the sites in Tamil Nadu exhibit different kinds of megalithic artifacts. There we get stone alignment also and iron implements along with beads. So the sites in Tamil Nadu has different kind of artifacts available. Megalithic sites like Kudakallu in Kerala provide a timeline from 2nd century BC to 2nd century CE. This is one of the most important findings in megalithic site that is the chronology and this chronology is very much confusing because it ranges uh, from 2nd century BC to 2nd century AD. Andhra Pradesh sites like Nagarjuna Konda display distinct regional variations in megalithic practices so there was distinct uh, regional variations and that can be evidence from the site of Nagarjuna Konda in Andhra Pradesh the distribution of sites across South India shows the widespread adaptation and adaptation of megalithic culture. So all the sites in South India and the widespread distribution area of this site suggests that there was a widespread adaptation of the megalithic culture. Megalithic types and their distribution. Now here in the left hand side picture, you can see different types of megalithic monuments and the megalithic types like cairn circles, menhirs and dolmens show a connection to broader megalithic tradition across India. So there are different types of megalithic monuments like Cairn circles, menhirs and dolmens and this links us to the broader megalithic tradition across the Indian subcontinent. Sites like Kodu Manal are known for their urn burials showcasing diversity in funerary practices. So there were diverse kind of funerary practices found in the megalithic sites and that can be evidenced from the site of Kodu Manal where we get urn burials. 
Cairn circles found in Tamil Nadu are indicative of cultural differences within megalithic traditions. So in Kodu Manal we find urn burials whereas in Tamil Nadu we find Cairn circles. Thus we can understand that there was diversification and cultural differences between the different megalithic sites even though being confined to the South Indian part of Indian subcontinent only. Megaliths associated with BRW are particularly notable for their intricate pottery designs. We have discussed in our last presentation that BRW are extremely difficult to make. Therefore, when megalithic culture is associated with BRW, we can understand that they had intricate pottery designs and ceramic technology. The occurrence of megaliths in strategic locations suggests a significant understanding of geography and environment. So there was occurrence of megaliths in very much strategic locations mainly in the uh, junction point of trade routes which understand uh, which uh, from where we can understand that people had significant understanding of geography and the environment. Evidence of agriculture and domestication from the megalithic sites. Charred grains of horse gram and green gram at sites suggest that there used to be a strong agricultural base. So we get charred grains of horse gram and green gram. And from that we understand that agriculture had a strong grip on the megalithic culture of southern part of Indian subcontinent. Hunting scenes suggest that alongside farming, hunting was significant part of life. So along with farming, uh, people also depended on different modes of hunting for their existence. And thus we can understand that it was not totally agro based, but there was existence of hunting gathering also. The diversity of domesticated species like cow, sheep, dog and horse points to a varied and complex economy. So there was domestication of cow, sheep, dog and horse and that points to the fact that there was a complex economy centering around agriculture, domestication and also hunting gathering. The existence of irrigation tanks and location of megalithic sites near water sources imply a sophisticated understanding of agriculture and water management. So here we find existence of proper irrigation and water management facilities also and that can be evidenced from the existence of irrigation tanks and most of the megalithic sites were made around a specific natural water source. Tools such as sickles and hoes reflect the development of agriculture and evolution of farming techniques. So we get different agricultural tools like sickles and hoes that reflect that there was development in the field of agriculture and along with that we also get evidences of animal domestication and as a mode of subsistence we find hunting gathering existing till the megalithic period. Art and symbolism. What kind of art practices were, were done by the megalithic people and what was their symbolic role in the society? Hunting scenes and depictions of domestic animals in paintings and figurines indicate a rich tradition of art and symbolism. So there were hunting scenes projected in various paintings of the megalithic sites and thus we can understand that there was a rich tradition of art and the symbols it used to display. Rock shelters containing paintings like those of Mallapadi in Tamil Nadu suggest a communal or ritualistic aspect of art. So there were rock paintings in sites like Mallapadi in Tamil Nadu and those paintings suggest that there was a communal and ritualistic aspect to the art of megalithic period. The use of graffiti marks in archaic Tamil Brahmi on grave goods signifies the prevalence of literary or symbolic communication. So there were graffiti marks found in different sites of Tamil Nadu in Tamil Brahmi. So 
uh, on the grave goods specially and that signifies that there was some kind of literary practices among the megalithic people decorative pottery with animal motifs and ceremonial pots with leads suggest a ritualistic and ceremonial culture so there was decorative pottery in the megalithic period and ceremonial pots have been found with leads which had animal motif in them and that suggests a ritualistic and ceremonial culture of the megalithic people the discovery of graves with objects like aged carnelian beads and swords points to a belief in afterlife of or the importance of status so we find uh, the evidence of carnelian beads and swords as grave goods in the megalithic burials therefore we can understand that people had a belief in afterlife and there was also class division in the society trade metallurgy and community what kind of trading practices used to be done what was their metallurgical techniques and what kind of community economic system used to function in the megalithic period the location of several megalithic sites on trade routes underlines the importance of trade and exchange in megalithic society so there was the evidences of megalithic sites being present in the junction point of trade routes and thus we can understand that trade used to play a vital part in the economy of this period evidence of locals melting at of iron at sites like payampalli indicates the understanding of iron production and its role in the community so people used to understand and use the iron implements and they used to realize their importance and that can be understood from the locals melting of iron sites available in different megalithic sites the metallurgical techniques such as the use of copper and bronze and alloying of metals suggest a specialized knowledge of materials we find the megalithic people having specialized knowledge of materials and having knowledge of different kind of alloying techniques because they could use copper and bronze along with the iron implements Community endeavors in building megalithic monuments reflect a collective societal feature. So people used to live together and they used to come together for building of different megalithic monuments. Ethnographic studies of modern megalithic communities help us to understand the social and cultural lives of people in megalithic South India highlighting the significance of rituals feasting and alliances so when we relate the megalithic culture with that of the modern period in different kind of ethnographic studies we get to understand the social and cultural lives of megalithic people in southern part of indian subcontinent now we will go through different kind of problems which are faced by archaeologists while interpreting the vedic period the scholarly debate of the aryan issue now debate focuses on correlation between aryan literary accounts and archaeological findings from 2000 bc to 5000 bc many people believe on the fact that the uh, Aryans were a tribe in Central Asia who invaded the Indian subcontinent and settled here and the original inhabitants of the subcontinent moved farther south but from the archaeological sources we can refute this theory by saying that nothing of that sort ever happened the relationship explored between vedic and harappan cultures and later stages of megalithic culture of south india show us that there was no specific archaeological evidence of the aryan invasion controversies arise from differencing from differing interpretations of the vedic text and archaeological evidence of the harappan civilization so from the vedic text it is written that the aryans invaded the indian subcontinent but the archaeological evidence of harappan civilization and any kind of archaeological evidence from that of the northern india do not give such report so there is a differing opinion from the literary sources and 
that of the archaeological evidences available from the same period. Some argue for an overlap between the late Harappan phase and the Vedic Aryans suggesting a cultural continuity. So some argue that there was an overlap which means both the cultures were almost contemporary. The late Harappan phase and Vedic Aryans suggesting that there was a cultural continuity from the Harappan period into the Vedic period. Other disputes such uh, other dispute this overlap, maintaining that the Harappan culture represents a distinct civilization not influenced by the supposed Indo-Aryan immigration. So many others dispute this overlap also, saying that the Harappan culture was a separate distinct civilizational culture. Archaeological correlations and interpretations. Attempts to connect the indo aryans with archaeological evidence have led to various hypotheses. So the indo aryans have uh, tried to incorporate themselves in the Indian subcontinent as has been said by different kind of historians. But there is no archaeological evidence for that fact. Hence, there has been a, always an attempt to connect the indo aryans with the archaeological evidence. Scholars like Kenneth Kennedy have analyzed the skeletal remains to identify population discontinuities in the Northwest region. So Kenneth Kennedy is a very much popular archaeologist who analyzed the skeletal remains in Northern India to identify the population discontinuities in the Northwest part of Indian subcontinent. Kennedy's analysis indicates two main phases of change around 6000 to 4500 BC and another post 8000 BC. So these are the two main periods where Kennedy has identified phases of change. No evidence suppose, uh, supports the large scale invasions or migrations coinciding with the decline of Harappan civilization. So there is no evidence of people migrating from Central Asia into India. And thus we can totally refute the Aryan hypothesis where it is said that people from Central Asia migrated into India, defeated the indigenous tribes and settled here. It is totally a false theory as we get no evidence which suggests large scale invasion. Small scale inflows are considered a possibility contradicting the theory of Indo-Aryan invasion. So there is a small scale inflow sometimes but it cannot be considered as an invasion. It was more like a migration. Literary evidence and archaeological findings. The Vedic literature and post Harappan archaeological cultures are analyzed for potential links to the Indo Aryans. So, the literature and the post Harappan archaeological cultures both are taken into consideration while finding while trying to find potential links to indo aryans and even though the literature says of some kind of invasion but no such evidence have been found in archaeological field elements such as fire worship funerary practices and use of horses at gandhara grape culture sites have been related to the aryans so people who consider the the invasion theory they have tried to relate the fire worship funerary practices and use of horses at as at the gandhara grave culture with that of the cultural uh, hypothesis of the indo aryans the presence of copper hoards and printed grey ware culture are also examined for connections to the Vedic Aryans. So we also examine different kinds of material cultures like copper hoards and printed grey ware and try to link them with the hypothesis of Indo-Aryan invasion. The chronological and geographical overlaps along with cultural elements are used to establish correlations with the later Vedic culture. So the chronological and geographical overlaps means the different kind of cultures belonging to the same period and 
in the same region along with the cultural elements are used to establish correlations with the later vedic culture pgw culture in particular has been linked to mahabharata events and the chalcolithic cultures of central india so the pgw culture has been found in different sites like Kurukshetra, Hastinapur, Atranji Khera and all these sites and they have been linked to the events of Mahabharata epic and thus we can find a link between the literary evidences and the archaeological findings of the Vedic period. Challenges in correlating the data. Now there are very uh, very much confusions when we challenge the when we try to relate the literary features with that of the archaeological evidences available. The central problem in archaeological literary correlation is determining the material culture's connection to known groups. So the problem while uh, relating the archaeological and literary sources is determining the material culture's connections to the known groups from the literary evidences. The spread of craft products is often confused with the spe spread of specific linguistic or ethnic groups. So the spread of craft products has been related with different kind of linguistic and ethnic groups. Historians and archaeologists seek greater methodolo methodological clarity before making historical inferences. So there needs to be an adjustment in methodology while interpreting history because same thing do not, is not always said by the literary sources and the archaeological evidences available. The challenge lies in interpreting continuity and change in craft traditions without imposing modern national or ethnic interpretations. So while interpreting the history, we should not be partial or we should not be nationalistic or ethnically inclined to a specific group. Material culture, especially pottery, must be scrutinized carefully to avoid erroneous historical reconstruction. So all the mat mat material cultures, especially the pottery and the literary sources must be analyzed carefully to prevent any kind of error while doing the historical reconstructions. The way forward is archaeo-literary studies. So we must take both the sources into consideration. It is crucial to differentiate between the spread of craft traditions and the migration of people. So both needs to be considered while studying the historical background of the Indian subcontinent. Identifying material culture with specific groups requires a clear understanding of ancient craft production and exchange networks. So different material cultures are identified with specific groups and to do that we need a clear understanding of ancient craft production and different kind of exchange network which used to function then. Archaeologists and historians must work together to interpret the craft distribution and technological changes. So interpreting history is a work of both archaeologists and historians. More interdisciplinary studies are needed to clarify the relationship between archaeological findings and textual evidence. So this is an interdisciplinary approach to history where we need to understand the relationship between archaeological findings and that of the textual evidences of a particular period. Future research should focus on developing clear guidelines for correlating material evidence with ancient text without any kind of bias. Now in an overview we will discuss about the entire presentation as a summary. Introduction to Megalithic in South India. Exploring the timeline key sites and the overlapping evidence of Megalithic and Neolithic periods shows the transition to settled life and agriculture. So the transition towards settled life and agriculture has, has been witnessed while studying the megalithic period in South India. 
the insight into the agricultural advancement domestication of animals and evidence of sedentary lifestyles from archaeological findings has uh, led us to the understanding of different kind of subsistence practices and settlement patterns analysis of crafts and metallurgical skills and trade practices inferred from material evidence including pottery and metallurgy gives us an idea about the craftsmanship and different kind of trade practices which used to function at the time. The rituals and cultural elements can be understood from the social and spiritual life of the megalithic communities through the rock art, burial goods and communal endeavors. Now, while correlating the literary and archaeological evidence, it is important to discuss the challenges of linking the Vedic literature with archaeological findings and the debate around the Aryan issue. Examining the skeletal analysis to understand the demographic changes and impact of material culture on historical interpretation is very much uh, essential to understand the material culture and skeletal record of a particular ethnic group. Proposing future directions for research emphasizing on methodological clarity and importance of interdisciplinary studies in correlating literary text with archaeological data is very much essential to interpret the Indian history in general. We must consider both the sources and analyze them carefully without any bias. So that was all about the material culture of uh, South India in the form of megaliths and also we have discussed about the different challenges faced by archaeologists and historians while interpreting a particular period in history. Hope you like it and always Please support me so that I can bring brighter contents in future. Thank you so much.